Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I've got another unboxing for you. This time it is the Haybike Braun electric bike. Now Haybike reached out to me and asked if I wanted to unbox their new e-bike here, and I figured since I've played around with Haybike bikes before in the past, that it'd be fun to try another one. But I told them, you know, I'm gonna say whatever I think about this bike, you can't buy my good blessings here. So that's exactly what this is. Like all my videos, I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts. All right, that's enough banter in the beginning. Let's get this bike out and start unboxing it. Now I know a little bit about this bike. I know it's a fat tire bike and I can already see those giant fat tires. So I know this is gonna be another big old bike. Oh, this is gonna be fun to pull out. And like I've said in the past, when possible, I like to try and hang on to the box here, just so I can use it, A, for garbage collection. Man, I really need to get a bike stand. Where was I? A, for garbage, co a, for garbage collection, and B, just in case there's something wrong with the bike, you can pack it up and send it back. And now we've got a pile of zip ties to get through. And of course, I forgot my snipper, so I'm having to do this with a knife, but generally, you want to use a clipper or some type of diagonal cutter on these. Got a surprise box here. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the fork here first because I'm gonna try and get the front wheel on so this thing will stand up on its own. However, I see now that the tires have been totally deflated in the box for packing, so I don't know how well it's gonna stand up on its tires, but let's see. It's got that nice olive drab color. All right, let's see about getting that front wheel on here. Let's keep the bars out of the way. It's got a old school threaded axle here instead of a quick release, so we just gotta open that puppy up. And we'll remove the axle that was spreading the fork. That's just kind of like a fake dummy axle. And we're on. Just get those finger tight for now. Of course, you always wanna check to make sure those are all the way tight before you start riding this thing. Now let's put the kickstand down. It actually does stand up, so that's nice. Now we can at least work from a normal height. All right, let's get these handlebars on. I like that they already have the stem mounted onto the bars, so you only have to do these two stem bolts on the back of the bars here. You don't have to put those four on the front. So I just need to get my alignment here and make sure my bars are aligned with my front wheel. Once I get that good, I can put my top cap back on here. Just make sure my alignment didn't change here. And now I can tighten up these bolts on the side of the stem. Oh no, I dropped my uh, five millimeter. There it is. Now some people ask why I do some of my unboxings here on grass and they say, you know, obviously you're going to drop something, you're going to lose it. And to those people, the only thing I have to say is you're exactly right. I don't know why I do this. This is a terrible idea. Now we can clear our bars, get a look at these nice, pretty accoutrements we get up here. Ooh, these actually are pretty nice. So here we've got our throttle on the right side, our pretty large display, and then we've got a nice keypad here. It looks a little nicer than some of the other ones I've seen. So we've got our plus minus, our battery on, our headlights, probably the function button. Here's another light, wonder what the difference is, and our horn. As usual, let's do the fun step here. So let's do a little cleanup as we go here. Let's check out the accessories that we get here. Charger, always important. Some tools that I didn't use. Oh, we've got some nice little axle covers here. Let's actually put those on. Axle here. I can pop my pretty covers on to make that look nice. And we have our pedals. I'll take my 15 millimeter wrench back out for this. And which trick will I use this time? Let's do the spinny, spinny, round, round trick. All right, tighten, 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 tighten. Same thing on the other side here. Left side goes on the left side. No big twists there. <laughs> Get it, twists. That was no pun intended, but gloriously executed. All right, same thing, round and round we go. All right, pedals on. Now it's battery time. Oh, big battery here. This is supposed to be a 48 volt, 18 amp hour battery. I believe that's something like 860 watt hours, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get this big old battery out. Woo, mama. Man, it's hot out here. Let's see what we got here. 48 volt, 15 amp discharge, uh, 15 amp hour. Ah, so it's only 720 watt hours. Okay, I thought it was gonna be bigger. 
All right, 720 is not bad. I'll take it. Battery is in. I noticed already there's some scratches and scuffs on here from shipping. That's a bit of a bummer. Yeah, I almost forgot about this box. Let's see what we have in here. I'm guessing this is the headlight. Yep, here we've got our gigantic headlight. Man, this headlight is huge. And it's like they're compensating for something with this gigantic headlight. Now let's just plug in that connector there for the light. And we're connected. Let's try turning this puppy on. So let's hold the on button. And we're on. All right, so we got a pretty basic LCD screen here, black and white. Nothing really wrong with that, but nothing fancy either. Let's see what we got for modes here. So looks like we go up to five pedal assist modes. What does function do? Uh, just shows you your different things. So it looks like whoever rode this last in the factory got it up to 30 miles an hour. Or maybe that's the lift wheel speed when you just pick up the rear wheel and let it spin in the air. If you don't have an electric pump by now, you really ought to consider one. These things are awesome. Got this one for cheap on Amazon. It could have been more than like, I don't know, 25 bucks, I think. I'll put a link to it uh, in the description below. But man, especially on these fat tires, it saves so much effort trying to do a manual pump because these just have so much air volume. And you just let that thing run. Now, as you pump these up when they're like dead empty, you gotta be a bit careful to lift the wheel, make sure you're seating the uh, bead of the tire here. Otherwise you'll get it kind of off balance and then you'll get that bump, 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 bump while you're riding. All right, let's try that. So if I was going to be doing a lot of road riding, I'd probably take these up to like uh, 20 or so. But I'm mostly going to be off-road here, so I don't think I'm going to go too much past 10. Maybe I'll go like 12, 13 PSI on these. There's 10. That feels pretty good for off-road. So you can see there's a lot of waiting here while these things fill up. That'd be pretty annoying with a manual pump. Okay, so we've got our tires all inflated here. Now let's look at what we've got. So I know I've got that uh, 720 watt hour battery here. We've got a 750 watt rear hub motor and this thing's pretty chunky. So I'm guessing that's gonna be 750 watts continuous, probably even more peak. Now, one thing I just noticed that is super exciting that I didn't see during the initial unboxing is that there's actually a dropper seat post. So check that out. The whole point of a dropper seat post is that when you're riding around, especially off-road like this, and you get into an area where you want to drop that seat down so you've got a little more room to sort of move your body around, you can just push the lever on the handlebars here and drop it down. Now you can be up on the pedals and you're not worried about getting punched by the uh, seat there. <laughs> then when you get back on the road or you're back on a trail that's you know nice and flat, you can push the button and have that seat come back up and meet you in the exact spot where you want it. You can kind of play with it like this and just sort of adjust how high you want your seat without touching the seat post clamp down here. So that's a pretty nice feature. Let's see what else we have here. Now I noticed on the dual crown fork here, we've got compression adjustment and we've got our preload adjustment. That's pretty nice to have both of those. I'm not a huge fan of the thumb throttle here. I mean, it's becoming very common, but I've always been a half twist fan myself. So I would have preferred to see a half twist throttle here. I definitely love the hydraulic disc brakes, especially on a big bike like this, a big heavy bike where you're going fast, you wanna be able to stop pretty quickly and have those strong brakes to rely on. Uh, so I noticed the uh, tail light here is unfortunately not connected to the main battery. It looks like this just runs on its own, um, either AAA battery, maybe a coin cell, not really sure. It's got different modes. Whoa, it's even got blue. All right, that's interesting. Was not expecting that. You got blue and red here. <laughs> so you can go all uh, all cop issue here. I think that's probably going to be illegal in the U.S. to actually run this on the road. I don't, I don't think anyone's really going to hassle a uh, cyclist, but you're technically not supposed to have blue lights on a vehicle on the road. The main problem with it running off of its own battery is just that when that thing runs down, you're going to have to either recharge the battery or replace it with a new battery. And that's always a hassle. I much prefer to see these things run off the main battery like the front headlight. Speaking of, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I push the headlight button here, yep, we're on. Let's roll this around so you guys can see. And that headlight is not quite as bright as I thought it would be. Whoa, I guess if you get down into the beam, it's, it's pretty bright. Let's point that down a little more so we're not blinding motorists. Let's try the horn. Yep, it's got that electronic horn that I'm not a huge fan of. I think you guys already know my feelings on those. What else do we have here? We've got our nice uh, bump stops here so that we don't scratch up the frame when we get to the end of the steering. One of the bump stops seems like it's about ready to crush my uh, headlight wire though. So I think I'm gonna wanna zip tie my headlight wire out of the way of that one. Let's see how well this front suspension works. Yeah, we could probably put a little more preload on there. 
Yeah, I think that'll be fine for my weight. All right, so that about covers all of the major points here. The next thing to do is to actually test this thing. So let's try that out. I'll come back for all this trash. And don't let anyone say I'm babying this thing. I'm putting it through its paces. You know, I'd say the suspension is actually working quite well. That dual crown fork is, is pretty nice. And you know, the, the big air volume in the tires is also pretty good for this type of riding. I'm in some pasture land out here that's pretty rutted out. And so having this level of suspension has definitely been nice. And then also that dropper post, you know, I can drop it down real low when I want to get the seat out of the way and really get a little more technical. All right, so let me give you some uh, final thoughts here on the bike. First of all, I'd say it's quite powerful. Um, you know, I'm not a huge guy, I'm about 150 pounds, but it gets me going and it gets me going quite fast. Um, you know, the acceleration's good. The top speed, I got it up to about 26, 27 miles an hour with a half charged battery. Again, you know, this is right out of the box testing. I didn't even charge up the battery. So assuming I had charged it to full, uh, you know, 100%, it might go a little bit faster. It might get up to that 28 miles an hour, but so far good speed right out of the box. Um, wheels are nice and big. Riding around on this grass has been, you know, totally fine. Took it out on some uh, dirt roads, some gravel roads, even some street riding, which all seemed to work great. Uh, I might go with a little higher pressure on the street just to give a little nicer control. But, um, you know, the handling on both the road and off-road has been, you know, phenomenal so far, I'd say. Um, the bike is a little smaller than I expected. You know, it fits me great, but I'm five foot seven or 170 centimeters. So if you're a big guy, this might actually feel a little bit small on you. Even with these big tires, the frame just isn't that big. I'm still a huge fan of this dropper post, which of course now isn't working. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So I'm a huge fan of this dropper post. It seems to work while I'm riding. If it does get stuck, you can just kind of hop up and down on it a couple times. It's not a super high end one. Nothing on this bike is super high end. Hay Bike is still very much a budget company, but moving up from there, like, you know, a little folding bike that I've tried before, this is definitely a big improvement. Uh, having the seven speed shifter has been great. The hydraulic disc brakes here, awesome. You know, again, not like the highest quality ones, but these Tektros are fine for the type of riding that, you know, folks like me are just doing, playing around out here, having some fun, recreational, leisure riding, that sort of thing. Now the price is supposed to be 1899 bucks. I don't know if there's gonna be any sort of promotions or something like that on launch. But, you know, for that price, I think this is definitely fair. We see a lot of $1,899 fat tire bikes that don't have features like the hydraulic brakes, like the dropper post, like the dual crown fork. So there's a lot to like here. There are still some things I'd like to see improved. You know, I really don't like the uh, way that the tail light here isn't connected to the battery. Um, the headlight itself is not the brightest thing out there, but it's still quite bright. And the bike itself feels, you know, fairly well put together. Again, this is not super high-end stuff, but for average Joes like me, it works just fine, and I've been having a lot of fun on it. So I would say that this is well worth the price at $18.99. Can you upgrade to something better for more money? Certainly. You know, if I wanted a nicer bike for screwing around on this type of off-road riding, I'd go with, like, a Frey bike or something, but that's going to be a few thousand dollars more. And so for, you know, just the budget level, playing around off-road, this kind of stuff, doing some overlanding even, I feel like $1,899, $1,900, that seems pretty fair. Last but not least, before we go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video and the randomly selected commenter is Chad Piatek. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. For anyone who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win a copy of one of my books, you can find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time.
You guys thought I was gonna forget this, didn't you? 